In today's video, I'll be testing out several new or weird kitchen gadgets that were purchased for very little money online. Including testing out how cut proof a cut proof glove really is, a device that de kernels an ear of corn, and something that sliced off the end of my wiener. And more things you guys dared me to do in the comment section. If at any point you find this video useful or you enjoy what you're watching, make sure to give it a thumbs up. It definitely helps out the channel a lot. All right, now let's get this thing going. For this next challenge, I'm gonna be testing out something called a cut resistant glove. And I figured I'd put this thing to the test at the risk of my own hand. Notice it did say cut resistant and not cut proof. That's a bit worrisome. Now what I'm gonna be using here is actually a serrated blade. So this is meant to really shred through stuff. So I'm wondering what would happen these cut resistant gloves suck. This serrated blade cut right through that on the very first try. There's just a small hole right here and it's not really showing up too much on the camera, but there's a bit of shredded fabric going all along the edge right there. Wow, I was really planning on putting these things to more of a test than that, but that did not look good. I mean, to cut a hole in this thing on the very first time that you swipe a knife across it, that's not very good. Now, of course, I wasn't gonna try to get through the whole video without doing some kind of YouTube challenge. Seeing as how I have my camera out and a big knife, I felt like the knife song would be a great way to test these gloves out. It does give me a little bit of confidence to try out the knife song while wearing these gloves. Now, I've done the knife song before, and it usually ends up with about a spot of blood somewhere, but I wonder if having these gloves on is gonna give me the confidence I need to get through it without poking myself. I'm guessing probably not now, since I just seen the thing get cut, but <laughs> we'll try it anyways. Okay, I can't do this. It gets pretty intense there. And I just don't have the hand-eye coordination. I also lack the utter disregard for cutting my hand off. Now, like I said, I have done the knife game before without a glove, so if you wanna see that, it exists. There's actually, I think, two of them. It ends up about the same way, but as you can see, I kept my hands, so. But that being said, when I stabbed myself the few times that I did, I didn't end up cutting myself. I don't think. Although I think it's very possible to cut yourself, but not any more than just any other regular mittens. I honestly don't think that there's really much of a difference between this and something else. I mean, if you were to have felt it, it's not any sort of like Kevlar or anything. It's just some cheap gloves I got on Amazon. That being said, we'll be testing out the next kitchen gadget. The next kitchen gadget that I wanted to try out was an egg slicer. And while I was shopping for that, I found its big brother right here, which is just the whatever you want slicer. But I am gonna be putting these things to the test. I'm gonna be seeing if it helps me skip a few other steps meanwhile. I've kind of been curious what happens if you put a hard-boiled egg in there that still has its shell on. It might make removing the shell pointless. Maybe it does it for you. I don't know. But there's only one way to find out. Beautiful. That worked out perfectly. Okay, let's get rid of that and we'll do something better. Okay, that was absolutely shit. So now we're going to peel one and try it out the normal way. I just slung egg all over my wall when I did that. All right, now let's try to slice the egg without the shell on it. That is oddly satisfying. That's pretty cool, actually. It's like I've got a deck of eggs now. But it's not really surprising. It did what it was supposed to do. Impressive, but not surprising. But now let's see what its big brother can do. I've never wanted to share a muffin in my life, but if you had to, maybe this machine would come in handy. Let's see. That worked out all right. It really flattened it though. The muffin got completely squished before it cut it. Maybe it might have just like gone faster, but probably not. Well, like I said, I didn't want to share the muffin anyways, but if you needed to, everybody could get a slice of muffin. I mean, I guess that's kind of cool if you're into the whole sharing food thing, but I don't really like to share my food, but. Squished muffin is still better than no muffin. All right, well that was pretty cool, but a little disappointing maybe. The next thing I want to try is this tomato here, because it said on the packaging that these are perfect for slicing. So let's put that theory to the test. 
It broke my machine. What the hell? All the cords broke off of it. These tomatoes are not perfect for slicing, and it's not like a really hard tomato or anything. Seems fine to me. I cannot believe it broke this thing. It just broke all of the metal cords right off of it. That looks crazy. I don't know about the little one, but this big one right here is an absolute piece of junk. If you see something that looks like this online, don't waste your money. It can only go through muffins, and not without squishing them first. We do have some other fruits here, and I have at least one working device, so I'll see what else we can do. Let's try putting a kiwi through this thing. Okay, that's what it did to my kiwi. I just got a squished kiwi. Not everything is going to be good at slicing through these. That's why we're doing the test. We're doing the test to find out how well they work. It's obviously not what it was meant for, but it's fun trying at least. <laughs> Starting to lose faith in this thing. But I've cleaned it off. I figured I'd give it at least one more try. I want to see what happens if we try to put these peeps through there. We are stronger than the machine. I mean, what I meant to say was, this thing doesn't work that well. It's all just mushed up in there now. I can't even really tell which side to peel it out from. This wasn't the smartest experiment we've ever done, but at least I'm okay with eating the results. And that being said, we'll be on to the next one. This next kitchen gadget that we're gonna be trying out is a pasta strainer. You just clip it onto the side of your pot and pour it into the sink. But I'm guessing that there's a pretty good chance when using this thing that you could just end up dumping all of your pasta into the sink. I'm just saying that as a skeptic. I have no idea how this is going to work. But it's flimsy. That doesn't give me very much confidence. We'll see. Here's what it looks like. It's very flimsy material. And it's got these little clip things right here on the side. But before we try it out, I have to boil some pasta. Okay, so like usual, I cook too much pasta, but I really wanted to put the strainer to the test because now we're going to be loading it up with the maximum capacity that this pot can hold full of heavy pasta and I'm thinking it's going to break off. And if it does, then we're losing all of our pasta and I might even burn the shit out of myself depending on how faulty this product may be. But I actually think it'll work out. So if anyone wants extra pasta, I have lots. Also, this isn't really the right size. Okay, and it's on there. Now here comes the big test. Okay, lost a few, but that's expected. Ah! But it is staying on there. We lost a few pieces. Okay, we're losing a little bit more. That's all right though. Casualties of war. It's a good thing I made too much. I'd say the vast majority of that survived, which is what I expected. So now we're on to the next kitchen gadget. For this next challenge, I'm gonna be doing something that I am not very proud of, which is boiling a hot dog. And I'm cooking my hot dog this way because I wanna see if there's any difference in the way this new kitchen gadget works on a boiled hot dog versus a grilled one and not at all because I broke my grill recently. But anyway, so this next kitchen gadget is a little device that you spin around your hot dog and then it cuts it in a spiral. So when you cook it, it kind of fluffs out in this weird spiral way. I actually made fun of spiral hot dogs in a recent video, but we're gonna give it a shot anyways. So that being said, you just take this thing and I guess you twist it. Okay, my hot dog's too big. It's like getting caught up in it. Or I'm destroying this hot dog. It's definitely cutting into it. The end of my wiener stuck. About to freak out. Oh, oh okay. Um, okay, so I've got a really f***ed up looking wiener. It's not the first time I've had to say that. But now it's time to throw it in the water and see how this thing cooks. So yeah, like I was saying, the end of my wiener got a little bit lobbed off, but we're gonna go ahead and throw it in there anyways. It's just sad. Well, here's what we got so far. Not really sure what to think about that. So after boiling it for a while, that's okay. It's, it's, it's not really, it's not really solid enough to quite pick up. Okay. That looks ridiculous, but at the same time kind of delicious. I was not intending on having two hot dogs, but it's okay that it turned out that way. Yeah, I mean, other than the fact that it's boiled, it's, it's okay. And now we'll be on to the next kitchen gadget. The next kitchen gadget I wanted to try out was the potato cutter. And if this works, might have an easy way to make french fries from now on. But seeing as how it was like $1.50 on Amazon, I'm not holding my breath. All right, so there's absolutely no instructions with this thing, but it seems pretty self-explanatory. So basically you just set a potato inside of this thing and then you take this other part and press it down over it until you have french fries. It worked! Oh 
my god, I'm a little bit surprised that that actually worked. For some reason, I thought it was gonna break the thing. But, we have what looks like a bunch of french fries right now, and that was a pretty easy way of cutting it up. Well, it looks like I got french fries for days, mother but really though, I do think that's pretty cool. And now we are on to the next kitchen gadget. The next kitchen gadget I wanted to try was a corn kerneler. I've never used this thing before, but I don't usually eat vegetables very often. This one also gives very little instructions. The only instructions that it comes with is this sticker that's on the top that says align top, slide down, pour out. So hopefully it's really that simple. All right, let's give it a shot. Well, we got the whole thing down, but it has not slid off. But we did make some corn, it just doesn't seem to have quite finished the job up. Yeah, the whole slide the thing down didn't really work out that well, but we did manage to get the corn of cob through. And although I did make a pretty huge mess here in the process, it does look like it removed the kernels of the corn from the cob. Kind of impressive, I guess? I don't know. <laughs> well, I sure am relieved I'm not gonna be spending so much time taking the kernels off of corn cobs, but a minute saved is a minute earned. So I can know what I'll be eating for the next week. And that being said, we'll be on to the next one. Meantime, I'm always up for a good challenge, so make sure to leave me your dares in the comment section. Make sure to like the video, subscribe if you got to have done that. For God's sakes, bell me for notifications. And I'll be seeing you guys as soon as possible with a brand new video. All right, thanks guys, bye.